Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Round the Code. Now today we're going to be looking at four reasons why your ASP.NET Core application might not be working in IIS. Come the end of this video, you should be able to resolve any issues that you have with your ASP.NET Core application working in IIS. Now I recommend that you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and also click on the notifications tab. By clicking on that you'll get a notification every time we release a video. So in front of us we've already got an ASP.NET Core application open in Visual Studio. What we're going to do now is we're basically going to go ahead and publish it to a folder. So we go into publish and we've got a target location there and we're going to publish it to that folder. Now whilst it's doing that, we've basically already set up an IIS website for this application. If we go into basic settings, you can see we've set up the physical path which represents the folder that we're publishing to. In addition to that as well, we've got binding set up for React Signal R. If we go into our host file, you can see that we've already set up an IP address pointing to that particular host. So it's just going ahead and finishing up the publishing. When it does, we're going to test it in IIS to see what, what exactly happens. Does it actually work or not? So it's gone ahead and do that. So we can go ahead, we can turn on the website in IIS. And if we refresh that, we're getting a 500.19 error there. Um, it cannot read um, the file because of permissions. It's got some sort of permissions issue, as you can see down there. So, quite easy to resolve that. So this is the folder where we're basically hosting our application in IIS. If we right click on it and we can go to properties. So we've got a couple of groups and users in there that have got permissions, but we need to add another one. So on Windows 10, typically, if we can find it, it's IIS iUsers. So what you can typically do is just give it full permission and that should hopefully resolve the issue. Now if you find that that doesn't resolve the issue or that group isn't there, then you can also add the users on there and that should also make it work. But obviously bear in mind that there might be some sort of security issues if you're given access to all users, but you can basically click on the users and that should at least get the thing going. But anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's apply those changes and see if it's actually resolved the issue. So if we go back, give it a refresh. Okay, so we're still getting the 500.19 error, but crucially, there's no error there. Now, what could be the reason for that? Well, basically, we need to download the ASP.NET Core runtime for it to work. Not only does it have it for x64 and x86, but also it installs runtime support for IIS. So you can get that from Microsoft's website here, and it's basically this down here. So runtime 3.7, and it clearly says here, on Windows, we recommend installing the hosting bundle, which includes the .NET Core runtime and IIS support. And so that's basically that here. Now we've already downloaded this, so we're just gonna go ahead and install it. Crucially though, we've basically written the application 3.1.7, but we're gonna install an ASP.NET Core runtime that's a slightly lower version. We're going to go for version one. So we're going to go ahead and install that. So that's going ahead and doing that now. So once this is installed, we'll try it again in IIS to see if it's actually resolved the issue or not, or whether we might have some issues with the version. There we go. It's successfully completed that. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So let's go ahead and refresh our application. Okay, so we've got a different issue now. We've got a 500.21. Handler ASP.NET Core has a bad module, ASP.NET Core module V2 in its module list. Okay, so obviously that's an issue there where we've got a different version runtime to where we've actually, the actual version number that we've written our ASP.NET Core application in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and actually install the right one now. So we're gonna go ahead and install 3.1.7. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So it's just going ahead and doing that. So hopefully after that, it will resolve the issue all being well. So it's gone ahead and done that. 
Okay, so we've got a different error now. We've now got a 500.30 error. What does that mean exactly? Well, there's no actual issue with IS. There's an issue with your application. So if we go back into our application and try and run it locally to see if we can diagnose what the issue is. Now, you might find that there is no issue running it locally and there's actually an issue on your, on your production server. As you can see there, we've got I've deliberately put in an error there just to sort of demonstrate this. But going back to what I was saying, you might find that on your production server, it might have an issue like it can't see the database. So how do we go about resolving that? Well, what we can do is if we go into our folder where we've published, we can go down to the web config. So we open up the web config and you can see here we've got this ASP.NET Core tag in here. And inside here, we've got an attribute of STD out log enabled, and that's currently set to false. We've also got this STD out log file, and that's basically a folder where it can store log files. Obviously, this is turned off by default, but we can turn it on and just save that. And then we can try and rerun it again. So it's still going to throw an error. But what we can do is you can see it's created this logs folder up here. So if we go in here, we can have a look and see what error we're getting. So it's saying input string was not in the correct format, start up line CS line 39. So if we go back into our Visual Studio application, you can see it's this issue here. So we can go ahead and remove that, go ahead and republish it. Before we republish it, we just need to turn the site off. So it's able to actually overwrite the files. So we go ahead and publish that. So once this is now we're publishing an application where it's basically shouldn't have any particular issues with it, hopefully it will go ahead and work. So let's turn it back on in IIS. Not quite, it's not quite finished yet. Okay, so it's finished publishing now. So we can go ahead and turn it back on in IIS. And let's just give it another go just to see if it's gonna work. There you go, you see our application is now working in IS. Let me just make sure that the functionality is working because this is actually a React application, but it's got an API uh, built in. So this is all working for an API and SignalR as well. It was one of the demonstrations I showed earlier on. And as you can see, it's all working. So hopefully that resolved your issue. Hopefully now you can get your ASP.NET Core application working in IS. Please leave some comments as to how you found this video, whether it resolved it for you, or whether you're having any other issues with IIS. And until next time, it's goodbye.